Well, you know what, man? It's just an overpriced Volkswagen. Have you ever heard a Volkswagen sound like this? What's happening, guys? We are back here again today for another video. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys, as always, for stopping in. On today's video, guys, we're gonna be talking about why broke boys love to hate on the Audi RS3. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so reason number one, a common point of critique for the RS3 as well as the TTRS platform is a lot of people are gonna say, because the RS3 does share the same chassis along with Volkswagen models such as the GTI, the Golf R, the Alltrack, Sport Wagon, all that kind of stuff, a lot of people are gonna say, well, man, you know what? The RS3 is not a real Audi. For many of you that don't know, traditionally Volkswagen suspension designs, again, this example being the MQB platform, they have a basic McPherson front suspension, Whereas the traditional Audi platforms, for example, the A4 and higher models, you're gonna have a multi-link suspension. So the front, you're gonna have four upper control arms as well as four lower control arms. So the end result is the suspension is gonna be a lot more luxurious. It's gonna be more refined, just overall better ride quality as you'd expect with a high dollar car. To a certain point, I can understand why people may feel like, you know what, it is a fairly expensive car, would like to see more of a, a traditional Audi suspension. We have to simply recognize the simplicity of the entirety of the platform. I will say for a number of reasons why I think this is a good thing, mainly being that it keeps the cost down when it comes to manufacturing. When you have a vehicle that shares so many similar components across the lineup with all the Golf R and the A3 and the S3, the GTIs, all this kind of stuff, by simplifying manufacturing, you can really bring down the cost of these vehicles, which is a great way to pack a lot more performance into a small package. The next thing I wanna talk about is fake Quattro. This is a big one, I hear it all the time. Why is the RS3 not real Quattro, fraud wheel drive, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, guys, this platform has proven to be incredibly capable. There are motorsport development companies that have taken these cars to the absolute ridiculous, mind-blowing levels of performance. We're talking four-figure power levels, putting down nine-second, eight-second quarter miles with all supporting modifications, and again, using that Haldex-based all-wheel drive system. So for anybody out there that's worried about, you know what, man, I'm not sending enough power to the rear wheels, and it's just like fake Quattro, blah, blah, blah. Look, I hear you, man, I hear you. But at the end of the day, we're talking a car that can do a low three seconds, zero to 60, with fairly minimal modifications. I mean, it's fairly well respected. What other cars in the same price range are gonna be able to do that? You'll often notice that a lot of negativity comes from people in the comments that don't always usually drive RS3s. So you always have to consider the source when looking at the broke boy negativity. In a perfect world, yes, I agree. For a high dollar car, I would prefer perhaps a different suspension design. Perhaps, yes, we could recognize the benefits of a traditional Quattro system. But once again, you have to look at it from the efficiency when it comes to the manufacturing process for these cars. I know some people say, well, man, why don't we get like a unique Quattro system exclusively to the RS3 or TTRS. Hey, you know what, maybe that's possible, but look, at the end of the day, these cars are already expensive enough as is. Can you imagine if they built a special, unique drivetrain for this application? The price is only gonna go up, man. It's only gonna go up. I would say that in order to keep the cars relatively affordable, it makes sense to build them on the same platform along with all the other MQB cars. Any unique features that are going to deviate manufacturing efficiency are going to come with a hefty price tag. The other thing I'll mention as well, having owned a traditional Quattro platform, for example, the Project S6, which of course, if you haven't seen the full build series, be sure to leave a link right up here somewhere. That car, having the traditional Quattro system, when you take a very sharp turn, if you're gonna do a U-turn, a lot of people don't like the way that you feel that almost mechanical binding from the all-wheel drive system. Some people will describe that drivetrain binding that you feel when you do a really sharp turn as quattro crawl. So there's always gonna be some pros and cons. Some people are gonna be happy, some people aren't, but I can definitely say with confidence that with the Haldex-based all-wheel drive system, you make a U-turn, no problem. You don't feel any uncomfortable binding or feel that kind of shuddering that you get with some of the full-size Audis. The other thing to keep in mind is when you look at fuel economy, if you're cruising down at 75 miles an hour, the last thing I'm worried about is, you know what, man, I really wish I was allocating more power to the rear wheels. 
if we can make these 500 horsepower 2.5 liter five cylinder cars that still get you know mid 20s when it comes to fuel economy i think that's a win so if we can cut down on parasitic drivetrain loss when we're at cruising speeds we don't need to use those rear wheels hey man no complaints for me the next thing I want to talk about in the space of broke boy negativity surrounding these cars is a lot of people say, well, you know what, man? It's just an overpriced Volkswagen. Is it? Is Wait. Wait, we are in an Audi, right? Is, is it an overpriced Volkswagen? Have you ever heard a Volkswagen sound like this? That's, that's what I thought, that's what I thought. Just making sure. That's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Sometimes we just have to fall back on the golden rule, guys. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Don't be a toxic car community broke boy just spewing negativity all over the place. It just really brings down the community as a whole. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.